Hello everyone! Today's video is about soldering, about where to start, how to solder correctly, and what tools are needed for soldering. What is soldering? It is the joining of two metal surfaces or objects using a third, more fusible metal. It is called solder. Solder joints are strong and conduct electricity. Solder joints are easy to disconnect. Where can soldering be useful? In everyday life. Soldering electrical wires, soldering contacts on the board of household appliances, and finally, hobbies, electronics, repairing the same household appliances. Where do you start? I think the most important thing is the desire. In general, there are only three important things. These are desire, the right tools, and skills. They will eventually come only with experience. So, let's move on to the choice of tools. The main tool is a soldering iron. The choice of a soldering iron is determined by its application. A powerful soldering iron is suitable for working with massive components and parts. A low-power soldering iron, on the other hand, is suitable only for small parts. For most household tasks and household purposes, a 40 to 60 watt temperature controlled soldering iron or a 70 watt temperature controlled soldering iron like this one is best suited. This soldering iron has interchangeable tips, which means that depending on the task at hand, you can use tips of different shapes and configurations. There are copper tips. They have very good thermal conductivity. They can be shaped to any shape, but they quickly wear out and burn out during the soldering process. That's why you have to buy new and new tips. There are also durable nickel-coated tips. They have a long service life, are easy to clean, but should not be processed mechanically or with abrasive materials. This damages the top layer of the blade and makes it unusable. There is a very wide range of such blades, and they can be selected in any configuration, which means that the blades will be convenient to work with. Solder. The molten solder wraps around the surfaces to be soldered, and after it cools down, a strong and reliable connection is formed. Solder is usually tin or an alloy of lead and tin in various proportions. It may contain additional impurities of other metals and flux. The most commonly used solder is 60% tin and 40% lead. The melting point of such solder is 180 to 190 degrees Celsius. Solder is usually sold in the form of wire of various diameters in coils. A very important material for soldering is flux. In order for the solder to spread well and adhere to the surface of the metals to be soldered, the surfaces must be cleaned of oxides, and oxidation is the main task of flux. Flux helps to wet the surfaces with solder, promotes solder spreading and prevents oxidation of heated metal surfaces. The most famous flux is the familiar rosin. Most fluxes are made on the basis of rosin. It is a solution or mixture that contains rosin. Fluxes are liquid or gel-like, and according to their action, they can be divided into neutral, medium active, and active. Active fluxes contain acid. It removes oxides from the surface very effectively, but its residues must be washed off. Acid negatively affects circuit boards and radio components and conducts electric current. Neutral fluxes are mostly used in radio electronics. So, to start soldering, you just need a soldering iron, solder, and flux. But you can also take a sponge to clean the tips. The sponge is moistened with water and cleans the tips well from solder and flux residue. Copper shavings will also do the job just fine. Tweezers. Since the solder and parts are very hot, it is dangerous to hold them in your hands, so you need to use tweezers. Wire cutters. Since you need to solder wires quite often, they will help you cut and bite off the wire in the right place. Long-nosed pliers will help to hold or remove some components. The third hand holder. It can be used to fix wires, boards, and radio components with which we will work. You can remove excess solder from the board with a solder tape. A tool called a stripper will help you strip the wires. When soldering, the soldering iron should be held comfortably in your hand. You can rest your fingers against the protective stop. 
The metal working part of the soldering iron heats up to very high temperatures, so it is strictly forbidden to touch or hold it. The temperature of the soldering iron should be set about 50 to 60 degrees higher than the melting point of the solder. Too high a temperature will cause the heating element to wear out faster and the tip to burn. It is a good idea to have a mat or other work surface to prevent solder drops and flux residue from damaging the table. You can place all the necessary tools and parts on the mat. Now, let's see what it looks like in practice. For example, to solder two wires, we put on heat shrink. Make a twist. Apply flux and solder. and we protect it with heat shrink. To unsolder a resistor, we fix the board to the holder, apply flux, and, holding the resistor with tweezers, warm up both of its leads in turn, and then remove the resistor. If you need to unsolder a massive capacitor or other component from the board, you can use a solder tape to remove the solder. The solder sticks to the tape and frees the capacitor leads. For components with many pins, such as chips, you can use a solder remover tool. Simply squeeze the spring, press the button, and the molten solder is sucked into the reservoir along with air. Since soldering produces harmful fumes, you should arrange your workplace so that there is good ventilation or at least use a hood or filters. Wear work clothes and safety glasses. Wash your hands thoroughly after completing the work. Please share your soldering experience with us. Like the video if it was useful to you and subscribe to our channel. We wish you success in your endeavors and see you soon.